Angelina Jolie has been in the news a lot lately, with her very public split from her husband Brad Pitt to a new movie in which she plays a very iconic role. The veteran actress has called her role in the new biopic, Bible of Opera, a dream come true. We already know that she's going to be perfect. In today's video, we'll talk about her role in the movie. First off, Angelina Jolie will portray Maria Callas. Angelina Jolie is a diverse actress who is no stranger to portraying strong, non-fictitious women. Her previous roles include Marianne Pearl in A Mighty Heart and supermodel Gia Carangi in 1998's Gia. Jolie will play La Divina, Maria Callas, in a biopic directed by renowned Chilean filmmaker Pablo Lorraine. The movie is named after its main character Maria, detailing her illustrious career and life. There has been an uptake in portrayals of strong women in cinema these past few years, with Kristen Stewart's portrayal of Lady Diana and Natalie Portman's portrayal of Jackie Kennedy, Knight has set the bar pretty high. Maria will see a collaboration between the Chilean director and Stephen Knight, who is known for his epic series The Peak Blinders. Even though the movie is still in its early stages, the movie is already generating a lot of buzz. Now for a little background on the opera singer. Maria will chronicle the final days of the American-born Greek singer in the 1970s. At the time, she was already famed for her performances at the world-famous Milanese opera stage La Scala and Tosca at London's Covent Garden. In a press release, the director described the film as a passion project. He hoped that the film would be a beautiful and tragic story of the life of the world's greatest opera singer. It would be a real imagination of her last days, which she spent in Paris. Lorraine adopted the same strategy as his movie Spencer, which reimagined the life of Princess Diana. The movie will revolve around her marriage to the Italian business mogul Giovanni Battista Meneghini. There were rumors he was stealing from her, which led to their divorce. It also features her second marriage to the Greek shipping magnate Aristotle Onassis. She met Onassis in 1957 at a party in Venice, and they had a long relationship. The Hollywood Reporter claims that Onassis eventually abandoned her for Jacqueline Kennedy and that the two were married nearly five years after John F. Kennedy's death. The movie is also said to feature her long-running feud with Renata Tibaldi, her rival at La Scala. Callas made a startling statement to the press, saying that comparing their voices would be like comparing champagne with Coca-Cola. She lived her last years in Paris by herself and passed away at the age of 53 from a heart attack. Her death came as a shock to the world, and she's still remembered for the force she was to this day. Finally, Angelina Jolie wants to do justice to the singer's memory. The Tomb Raider has been super excited since she got cast as the iconic opera singer. Her fans already know that she gives her roles everything she has. We are very hopeful to see the life and legacy of Callas through the depiction of the very skilled Angelina Jolie. In a press release held for the announcement of the project, Jolie stated she loves to take on challenging roles as they help her grow as an actress. She has also expressed her admiration for both Pablo Lorraine and Stephen Knight. Not only is the actress very excited to work with the director, but Lorraine called Jolie a true fit for his next masterpiece. He's looking forward to merging two of his most deep passions, movie and opera. While no official dates have been announced, the movie is in the early stages of production and will be released in 2024. Now, let's look at Stephen Knight's top five movies and TV shows. First off, at number five, we have the series SAS Rogue Heroes. For his most recent project, Stephen Knight adapted Ben McIntyre's best-selling book, SAS Rogue Heroes. It details the origins of the SAS, the first and greatest special forces force in history. The legendary director turned the book into a six part television series titled SAS Rogue Heroes. Starring Connor Swindells, Jack O'Connell, Alfie Allen, and Dominic West, the all-star cast brings the chaotic war drama to life. In a press junket, Knight stated that his father's military service and the book's amazing story were two of the reasons he was interested in adapting the novel. He adds he loved the idea behind the novel. A group of young men came up with the novel. It was a different approach to the war. The novelists were bored with the pre-existing literature and the status quo and wanted to make a change. As a result, the tide of the conflict was turned. Military accomplishments don't get much more impressive than this. The first reviews are in, and it seems like a must-see. SAS Rogue Heroes is said to be a suspenseful tale that pinballs from action-packed set pieces to funny moments to heart-wrenching loss, all in the blink of an eye. Coming up, we have the series Peaky Blinders at number four. We can all agree that Stephen Knight's biggest cinematic achievement is Peaky Blinders. Since its inception in 2013 on BBC Two, it has broadcast for a total of six seasons, the sixth and final of which will air on BBC One in 2022, which is one of the most anticipated series of the year. The series is set in the post-World One era and revolves around a criminal gang in Birmingham. The gang called the Peaky Blinders is led by the ruthless Tommy Shelby. Their signature look is a long overcoat paired with caps that have razor blades sewn into their peaks. The blinders rule the streets of Brum with a mixture of fear and awe. It was partially motivated by Knight's early years in Small Heath, a district of southeast Birmingham. The scenes showing horses in scrap merchants' yards are iconic, 
not only from a cinematic point of view, but because it was inspired by Knight's father. He based these scenes on his own childhood. The garbage and scrap metal filled areas where the merchants showed off their horses were all that remained of the old Birmingham. The director wanted Peaky Blinders to depict the dying days of old Birmingham. Knight won Best Returning Drama at the National Television Awards for the series, and he also shared that filming on the Peaky Blinders spin off will begin in the spring of 2023. Now for number three, we have the biopic film Spencer. Spencer was a dramatic retelling of a specific period in the lives of Princess Diana and Prince Charles. It was set in 1991, while the family stayed at the Queen's Sandringham estate. Princess Diana has been portrayed on TV time and time again because of her dynamic personality. Therefore, it was a difficult task to undertake, and the director felt the pressure. The movie portrayed Kristen Stewart as the revolutionary princess during the time she found out about the affair that Prince Charles was having. The movie detailed Diana's spiral into depression and the depiction of the customs of the royal family. Even though initially he wasn't sure whom to cast as the titular character, he ended up with Kristen Stewart. She jumped at the chance to portray her personal hero and, in a bold move, gave a career-defining performance. Because of her portrayal of Diana, the actress was nominated for an Oscar, a Golden Globe, and a Critics' Choice Movie Award, and the film directed by Knight was praised by many reviewers. Next up, we have the series Taboo at the number two spot. To produce the 2017 BBC One dark period drama Taboo, Stephen Knight collaborated with Tom Hardy and his father, Edward Chips Hardy. Taboo is set in 1814, and it follows James Delaney, who has just returned from 12 years in Africa. The war veteran is now preparing to take over the family business after his father's death. He told Deadline at the time that he and Hardy get along so well because they don't spend much time with each other outside of working on the series. Not developing a personal relationship has made their creative collaboration very successful. Knight has already given Taboo two more seasons. Six of the second season's eight episodes have been written, he said, in November 2021, and filmed might not begin until late 2023 because of Hardy's commitments. Tom Hardy's tale of voodoo, incest, and trade regulation on Canada's west coast is very entertaining and compelling. All of these factors contribute to the taboo's uniqueness, which is no small feat in today's oversaturated television market. Finally, at the top spot, we have the feature film Locke. In the 2013 movie Locke, director Stephen Knight first collaborated with British actor-slash-producer Tom Hardy. In the film, Hardy plays Ivan Locke, a successful construction manager and devoted family man whose life falls apart after he gets a disturbing phone call after he leaves work. Locke is full of hyper-specific construction language and talks of the bureaucracy surrounding the procurement of road closure permits. Even though Ivan Locke is not exactly the model of work-life balance, he is deeply dedicated to improving cities. The film, which Knight wrote and directed, has a 91% approval rating on review aggregator site Rotten Tomatoes, with critics applauding Hardy's portrayal despite there being just one other character in the film. That's a wrap for this video. Do you want to know more about the Bible of Opera? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one.